What's up, everybody? Welcome to another great episode of Rugby Sense. My name is Gift Gift Tommy Bailu, and I'm here with the beast mode, Ryan Flynn. Ryan, what's up, man? Nothing much, man. Just another week. Get the opportunity to do this great show. Uh, I'm just ready to get after it. Can you believe this is our fifth show that we've been able to do? This is the fifth show that we've done. We've made it through five, actually four that people have seen, but five yeah. actual shows. I'm surprised. It. We didn't get... it makes makes my Monday so much better. It does. It does. I, I enjoy it. And then, you know, people will see it on Wednesday or Thursday whenever they'd see it. But it, it is. It's life. Like I've I've really come to find some thrill that goes along with it because uh, oh, yeah. I like to talk. Yeah. I, I, <laughs> exactly. I, I love hearing myself talk, so I would just watch this on loop for the whole entire week until there, the following Wednesday. There you go. I, I thought you and I are on the same page. I, <laughs> I, I thought that was life. Like it's a recording I go to sleep to. Just hear my voice go over and over and over. <laughs> nonstop, nonstop, nonstop. <laughs> Man, look, it's a great week of rugby. I know you had a great weekend of rugby. We're gonna go into that a little bit more, yeah. but dude, kicking right off the bat. Let's hit it up with some scores around the nation. We're going to talk about that before we get into our predictions that we got wrong, right, and uh, not <laughs> yeah. too bad. <laughs> so just right off the bat, guys, you know, first, some of the scores that stood out to us this past weekend. Got to get the right paper. All right. Indiana, uh, number nine, Indiana defeated Iowa 123 to 10. That what is the hell? Disgusting. That is ridiculous. I mean, the the nice, I there is no nice part, but like the thing about those type of blow ups, though, you're not getting beat up physically. You're just not touching the other team. You don't do anything. It, it's at least you know that you are legitimately just suckier than the other team. It's. It, I I mean, they had to cry right after. I I, mean, I would not. You there's no way you weren't shedding tears after getting beat by over 100 points. For what it's worth, Indiana has been a beast mode all season. So I mean, kudos to them. Yeah, well done, bravo. Uh, next game was West Virginia at Army, and Army took them down 63-13. This is all D1A rugby. Um, mm -hmm. West Virginia just moved up to D1A, so uh, I guess this is their, um, what do they call it, their their hazing period? Their... Yeah, <laughs> uh, probationary period, whatever, but that, that's no surprise there. Army's been monsters, and if you're going to come to D1AA, you got to be ready to go. Or yeah. D1A, D1A, you gotta D1A, to... D1A, yeah. Yeah, so you got you to be ready to go off the bat, and... Army doesn't play games, so Boom. that was no surprise. Uh, moving into D D1 AA, get you there. Kentucky <laughs> got its first win of the season, 49-14 uh, over Ole Miss. Uh, the big game, now this one was the one that I was, I, I should have mentioned last week, but I completely forgot about it, with Florida International over Central Florida. UCF incumbents, they've been two, three-time champions. Uh, no, no, they've been Three-time championship participants, two-time winners, and, dude, they got their asses kicked by this <laughs> FIU team, losing 31-17. to 17. That sucks. <laughs> dude, look. I mean, that's all you can really say about it. That sucks. I mean, it's hard, but, you know, I, I have to give credit. You know, I, I you know, FIU's friends of the show, Ronnie Suarez, this whole group is, they, they look like they're on a mission. They're clearly yeah. on a mission. <laughs> On a mission from God. On a mission from God. It's a holy mission. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, man. Moving into the Ivy Leagues, I had uh, Dartmouth over Yale, 46-5. to five. There were a lot of big blowouts. In, in yeah, I mean, I was, when I was checking out the scores, that was absolutely ridiculous how bad teams were getting blown out. But, again, another, that's not another surprise. Dartmouth has always been good, traditionally fantastic, and they, had a, they have a solid squad this year. So yeah. that's no surprise there. Yeah, right, that's a squad that's run by uh, Gavin Hickey, if I remember correctly, mm -hmm. who did the book Rugby Revealed and is like a former new former England uh, England rugby U national player. Like, you, oh wow, yeah, dude's just beast mode altogether. Yeah, monster. Yeah. Uh, so, and um, it, it, moving into D two, uh, this score like completely threw me off, and uh, I think you can relate to this one. Spring Hill College over South Alabama, <laughs> fifty-one to three. Uh, you know, I, I was looking through the Twitter feed and I just kept seeing Ryan Flynn score, Ryan Flynn with a kick, Ryan Flynn score, Ryan Flynn. You know, what 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 happened, man? Did did you get into another another level? <laughs> yeah, you know, I just the inner beast came out. No, no uh, I <laughs> Marshawn <laughs> lynched it. <laughs> You're right. Yeah, right. Right. I, the dark visor just busted out. We were ready to go. Um, 
No, it was just a super good game, man. Uh, the the pack was really just clearing out the rocks and dominating the scrums, absolutely dominating. Um, and there's the back line. The, the passing was so smooth, and I was able to just kind of sit out on the outside and get fed the entire time. So I was able to dot it down uh, once or twice, which was awesome. Uh, but I think the real real hats off, <laughs> pun intended, to our buddy, uh, eight-man Jacob Cambos on Spring Hill. He scored a hat trick, which was awesome. And uh, the hat trick came within, like, the first 20 minutes of the game, too, oh, if God. I remember correctly. Yeah. So, uh, oh, it was it was a, it was a good time. <laughs> I feel like I feel like, I feel like you guys kind of won the Deep South Rugby Championship. Like I feel like you guys won the Conference Championship. Yeah, yeah, yeah that, <laughs> we're hungry for it. <laughs> after we're after last year, man, we were really. I mean, we're just rolling rolling past teams. We have Tulane and Southern Miss coming up. Two big tests that we're ready for, man. Uh, but yeah, eyes are definitely on the prize. Sweet, man. Um, moving on to women's, dude, this wasn't a Matrix game, but I have to give credit to Lindenwood women. Once again, they do in their East Coast tour. I feel like this is their recruiting trail, but it's just another smash and grab that they're doing. Uh, they went to UNC, which is a legitimately good women's program, and smashed them 61-15. And before that, they stopped at University of Virginia to take on the the women there and destroyed them 57-0. But it looked like they had a lot of fun uh, traveling to the East Coast, even though they were just up in Pennsylvania just a week before. It's yeah, they're, they're I mean, traveling like crazy. But then after I saw that one girl in the CRCs with the the rugby war goddess, yeah, with, with women's rugby at Lindenwood just scares me. Yeah, dude. I agree. I, they just they don't beat teams, they absolutely destroy them they and make them feel terrible about them. To, and yeah. what makes it even much more surprising, this this women's team is only about two years old. Like two, three years old. Oh really? Yeah, they're only like two, three years old. Like they they've done so much in such a short period of time. That's very very impressive. Yeah, like the men we already knew about the men. The men were you know the men were the men. No, they, they were good. good yeah. yeah, but they I mean that's why I, I keep saying I don't I no longer think that they are the third best team. I, I really think it's gonna be come down to them. It's gonna be Penn State first, Lindenwood women, um, Central or whatever Washington State. Over mm-hmm. that Cerevi runs, Life University, oh. and then everybody else is going to be a distant uh, fifth, sixth after that. Oh, yeah. No way. No, there's no one hanging with those teams. No. Those, oh, like, my God. Top four or five. No, not a chance. I was I was just like, dude, that's that's insane. You you, you guys need to, get, need to get a mercy rule on this mess. Yeah, right. <laughs> 50 points, and that's it. Oh, man. Well, look, everybody, look. And we got a couple scores for you, so go ahead. Check them out over there. That way. All right, man. So, moving on. Rugby World Cup. Woo! Pool finals just ended, and the U.S. Maybe next four years. There you go. We, look, you know, it's it's a step-by-step process. You know, lost a, you know, there, there's two games. Because since the last time we did this show, we, we didn't get a chance to uh, talk about the Springboks game against the U.S. and then obviously this Japan game 28-18 loss kicked in but uh I I what did you think about this uh the USA versus Japan and uh I guess a little bit on the Springboks because I feel like a lot of people were pretty much saying the same thing after that one yeah you know (laughs) there's only so much you can say I mean so much high expectations for him coming in and they just shit the bed. <laughs> I mean, I had such high expectations for them. I, I didn't expect them to go into the knockout rounds, but may, at least one win, you know. Yeah. I mean, I thought maybe over Japan, but you know, they were just they just got put on some tough competition. Some Japan, especially coming out of the woodwork, being like a huge threat uh, in their pool. But now they have four years, get some more tests in, uh, and try to bring it back to the next World Cup. So, I mean. I mean yeah, dude, I, I gotta uh, I gotta say, you know, I think this Rugby World Cup was like that final catalyst that will be used to launch professional rugby in the States. Um, I feel like after that, between the announcer saying it, and then obviously after that, the, the Springboks game, and then losing to Japan, a team that we won in the Pacific Nations Cup just a month earlier, mm-hmm. um, you know, it, uh, a month and a half earlier, it just seems to be that... 
I think there is now a proper motivation to get a professional 15s team. If anything, to at least get the players to play with each other every day uh, exactly. throughout the year, as opposed to twice, like it, it, opposed to playing like a club team twice a year. Which I mean, I understand yeah. why, but dude. um, because <clears throat> excuse me, uh, because I was when they played the All Blacks, so I made a really good point. Like the All Blacks, what they do for a living is play rugby. They play on professional teams in New Zealand, and a lot of them play together on the same team. Whereas compared to the Eagles, they work. Full time jobs. Right. Uh, I mean, the, they work full time jobs. Not so much always focused on rugby. They play like high level club rugby in America, which is good, but nowhere near the level of professionals uh, across the across the world. Um, and you know, like New Zealand, they're working out all day, they're training all day. Compared to America, you're working a nine to five. You got to go stop at home, feed the kids, yeah. take to and from the babysitter, and then you go to practice. Then you got to work out on your own time. Uh, so a profession, I, we keep saying it, and they tried uh, with the NRFL. That no one knows what's going on with that right now. After they couldn't get their stuff together, they, they, um, there's that that whole situation. It's going to be somebody else who comes out with it because that's that's a unless they come out with extremely amazing damage control. I really wouldn't. They, I couldn't. Yeah, I mean, that that's a whole nother, I could go on a whole another rant about that. But Touché. Yeah, they. Yeah, so them not getting their stuff here. That was a huge hit to uh, to rugby. But yeah, I mean, I don't know. I top level club rugby just won't cut it if they if we ever want to, you know, go any. I know like one or two of the Eagles play professionally in England, but that's about it. Yeah. Uh, we really got to step our stuff up. I mean, you know, I, I think obviously within that discussion, it's it's just even. I think. One of the things that I, I've appreciated is that, you know, there's been a lot of attempts to, to create some element of a professional program. I, I think one of the things that have been one of the have been a detractor have been just timing. You know, it's just it hasn't been the right time, uh, you know, whether it's it was too early, like the early 2000s, late 90s. Rugby was still rugby was what? Four years out of being professional, four or five years out of being professional, just becoming officially mm-hmm. professional. And, you know, it's still just starting up in the States, even though it's been around for so many years. But it's still in a primordial, you know, Uber club, not very strong youth program. But the last four or five years, we've seen, obviously, all the upgrades and stuff like that. Instances like streaming and and statistics taking, recruiting, sponsorships have Increased past, you know, these uh, major rugby schools like Life and St. Mary's yeah. and stuff like that. So now you're starting to see it happening more in a, a, a minor, very tail end, very minuscule uh, mainstream element, but it's still in a mainstream element. So now the mind, the, the, the U.S. populace, it might be a little bit more accustomed to being able to deal with rugby and its professionalism and handle it the way it should be versus what they could be before. I know uh, for in Tampa, they're doing the Halloween Sevens Rugby Sevens yeah. Elite International Invitational, Elite International Invitational. Yeah, Elite, yeah. underline. Elite. <laughs> elite, you know, <laughs> and that is uh, an instance to try and get the uh, professional Rugby Sevens started, even though I don't really believe that Rugby Sevens is the basis, but... Hell, give them something. It's it's a start. I've never believed that you have to do one thing and one thing alone. It's it can work in its various functions. Exactly. So exactly, yeah. Uh, stuff works in mysterious ways and different ways. So you yeah. just got to keep trying. You got to push it out. You just have to make sure you have what you're doing. I I personally believe that it's going to take our generation to really un- make sure that they <laughs> can actually establish it because, dude. Old boys, eh, dude, you guys yeah, have had... This, no, yeah, let it die. <laughs> yeah, you guys, you guys have had like 30, 40... Yeah, yeah. It, 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 they've had 30, 40 years to be able to try and get it together. <laughs> and you blew it. And All right, you blew it. next. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, dude, going in, the quarterfinals, knockout rounds, now that the U.S. is out in the pool play, which is so weird. Because for some reason, I was still thinking that the Rugby World Cup would still placate that whole shield, plate, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, fin- finale to, like, even though you didn't make pool play, but you still got a little bit of a game left crap. I was, yeah. I was really happy to see teams actually have to go home. Like, yeah. Was, yeah, I mean, you, uh, trophies aren't given. Yeah. 
Because yeah. <laughs> it's the worst. Like, sometimes I, it's the one part of rugby that annoys me. Like, I love the fact everybody has a chance to win something, except for people who win in even number instances. But, um, you know, uh, in even number finishes. But to have, to be like, all right, you didn't win your pool play, but you still have a chance to win some other trophies. Yeah, that, that, annoys me. that never, like, the, the bowl and the plate, yeah. that n- is never, I mean, I've been playing for five years. That never made sense to me at all. So, like, ninth place can still get a trophy? Yeah. I, I didn't know, like, that's a good thing. <laughs> right, like, no, no, you lose your confidence so you can come back and earn that cup. Like, and You finished ninth out of 15 teams. You yeah. do not deserve a trophy. No. Go home. If you are less than 50% of the the total uh, contestants, you do not need to be in that uh, – uh, you do not need to be in that echelon of exactly. trophy games. Yeah. It's not a – yeah, that was – that has always confused me. My like ever since I started playing, that has always confused me. See, for me, it's been that and the factor of odd number finishes. So I understand first place getting it. I don't. I understand third place getting uh, a, a yeah, trophy. Yeah, I can see that. I don't understand fifth place. I don't understand seventh place. I don't understand ninth place. All right. Why do you screw second place? Because the people <laughs> yeah, that were right. actually in the finals don't get anything. You get a good pat on the back. Hey. Yeah, like, oh, you lost, nerd. <laughs> nerd! You're such a nerd with your losing, coming in second, being in the Go actual finals. Some books after you lost, nerd. Do some <laughs> long division while you're at it. <laughs> oh, man. So, yeah, it, it's never sat right for me, but, you know, it's whatever. No, but, I hear you. No, I agree 100%. But in this quarterfinals, I, I think it's pretty much been, it looks like it's the people that I would have expected. South mm-hmm. Africa, Wales, South Africa versus Wales, New Zealand versus France. Ireland versus Argentina, Australia versus Scotland. I mean, yeah, I mean, yeah. Although, I mean, those teams have been just rolling past competition, killing it. Uh, clearly, as everyone has watched. So I'm now I'm really excited because now all the teams like I hate to say, it, but USA are out of the mix. Yeah. So this, it's not going to be like any easy rollover blowout game. It's going to be some very good rugby from now on. And even more particularly, it's going to be first round knockout. It's going to be uh, win and move on, or you're out. And yeah. that that or, I love. Get back on the plane, yeah. Yeah, I, I love that because now it makes people actually have to give a crap about what exactly. they do. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, no, I agree. I, I'm super pumped, man. Um, I think Australian Scotland, that's going to be a great game. I'm taking the Aussies over that one. And then uh, I think Wales and South Africa is going to be a great game, and I think Wales is going to edge them out as well. I agree with you on that one. Uh, I'm going to say the other game that I really do like is Ireland-Argentina. I mm-hmm. mean, Argentina's been edging it out. I feel like this is going to if, if Arge- I feel uh, I think Argentina's going to take this game in an upset. I initially had Ireland versus New Zealand in my finals, but I really think Argentina's actually going to end up taking this game because I just watching them, they, they look like they're just clutch. They're not going to be yeah. necessarily dominant overall, but they're clutch. Mm-hmm. Yeah, oh yeah, come come crunch time, they're money, hundred yeah. percent. So uh yeah, I'm I'm down for that. All right. So now on to favorite topic, question of the day. Um, you know, this one and look, audit people, if you guys ever want to have a question of the day, go ahead, send us a hit up on Twitter or Facebook at Gift Time Rugby or like us on Facebook, Gift Time Rugby uh, Gift Time Rugby network and just send us what you think the question of the day it needs to be something rugby some obscure and something that is just just different interesting interesting just flat yeah. out interesting exactly for today our question of the day is if you could play rugby anywhere where could it be but it has to be in a fictional land your top three fictional land rugby locations ryan man go well first off Monsters Inc. I think playing in that that laboratory factory they scared the kids. I think that'd be phenomenal. Toys R Us, Sid's backyard. Even though I was never a big fan of him after what he did, <laughs> I'd like to. I think he had a nice backyard. And then Rugrats in Tommy Pickles' backyard because the adventures they had there were on point. And I think you could get a crazy match of sevens back there. I mean, dude, I, I feel like with the Rugrats land, like you're just gonna be hitting obstacle after obstacle. Like it'll just be <laughs> random. It won't be like just rugby. It would be rugby hide and go seek. Like exactly, <laughs> and it would be brilliant. And then I got my boy Chucky Finster with me. <laughs> And it, there's nothing else I would ever want. It's all about that Phil and Lil team, man. It's all about <laughs> yeah. that Phil and Lil combo. You know? right. 
and look, I got to give you credit. The Monsters, Inc. one, this is, this is where I see the benefit that would come out of that. Is because you'll have all those doors. And so whenever you think that someone is about to make a try, you just run Boom. to the door, zoom through the other side, catch them on the breakaway, coming Boom. out before you got the it. There you, you go. Got it. Done. <laughs> Done. <laughs> all right. So for my, my lands, all right, I had... Number one, for you know, I'm gonna start from three and move down to one because I gotta, I gotta bring make it drama, dramatic. Dun 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 dun. All right, at number three, the land from Frozen because, <laughs> dude, you have powers and rock trolls. Let it go. Like, <laughs> let it go. <laughs> yeah, you get the pat. Yeah, exactly. You get the ball out. You get the rock trolls. Set your de- like. Think about rock trolls as your forage. Like they, you can't maul past that. They're exactly. short to Not the ground, chance. knocking everybody over. Never have to worry about tackles. Um, my second place is from Interstellar, the movie. Uh, jump through time. Good stuff. Good stuff. I'm all about the reappearing and appearing where as per necessary, so <laughs> I can score as high as possible. I want to be part of the team that runs up a thousand points on the board for the first say time. Ever. Probably the first rugby game ever to hit over like 500 points. Right. See. Low ambitions. A thousand. We're all about yeah, a thousand. Fair, fair. It's all about the big money. It's all about the big money. And then my number one place is pretty much I like any Power Rangers locale. You know why? Because one, I know physics doesn't exist in that area. <laughs> and so I could jump if I just have the power. I just need to get my morpher, you know, go, you know, run as a center, morph, clobber through some people, then morph out. Take it out to my fly half, and then get it to my Zord, and then we fly it over for the try as they drop it through. You've really put a lot of thought in that in that last one, haven't you? It, uh, look, look, I I know, I I, I recognize the land. You got to know where you to take your advantages. All right. How the, how late were you up till last night? Just like putting that together. <laughs> I went through a few episodes, you know, <laughs> seasons one through 18, oh, yeah. no big deal. Yeah. Just season one, two, all of them. <laughs> well, you know, it, it was like nothing. Like, I felt like, <laughs> hey, we got to make sure. We got to, I got to make sure I have my points yeah. concrete. I have to be thorough. <laughs> I have to be thorough with this. Power Rangers fans watching this show will call me out. There you go. I know. Right. Look, I, I'm just saying, I, we got to keep it authentic. Duh. Shh. <laughs> such a geek, Ryan. You're such a geek. <laughs> oh, but yeah, there we go. My places, uh, and like I said, I, other than some maybe issues with monsters because that place always seems to get destroyed. But you know one thing: your rugby pitch will never stay destroyed for longer than a couple hours because in the land of Power Rangers, the same place can be destroyed over and over, and we'll be <laughs> back right the next episode. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> Um, all right, so we're coming to the end of the show. Uh, look, game for this week. It's time to give us our predictions. Last week, you know, you got it. What was your record? Was something? And oh, your record was uh, one, two. You were two and one left off of your record for last week. I'll say, yeah, and that 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 one loss, I really screwed the pooch on that one. Yeah, yeah nine you know, five. You, Dang. You try to challenge yourself and roll the dice, and you know that's what happens sometimes. And the team you thought was going to win loses ninety-one to five. It happens. So let's do a quick review because I think we forgot to do it earlier, but whatever. Uh, yeah. Last week you had Alabama over Vanderbilt as your lock, and Alabama won forty to three. Uh, for your upset pick, you had Florida over Auburn. I'm sorry, you had Auburn over Florida, and. Uh, no, no, no. You had Florida over yeah. Auburn. Yeah, Florida yeah, I over was, Auburn. I was, I've been very unimpressed with Florida uh, thus far this season. I mean, they have the decent record, but just how they were playing wasn't impressing me. And they flipped but you they, off. They, they, oh, they turned it up. Yeah. I'm impressed now. The message has been sent. 46 to 17. They gave you the middle finger and said that they this is our they game. They did. Well, I mean, I'll take that middle. I deserve it. Well done. <laughs> well done. I will not doubt them anymore. And then your last upset was Ohio State women over Penn State women, which... Penn State gave you double middle fingers. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they said, do not doubt us. This is what happens when you doubt us. Uh, <laughs> and they just laid down the hammer 91-5. 91-5. That's God, fair. Dog. So, for me last week, I had my lock pick. It was Kentucky over Ole Miss. Kentucky did it for me. Gary Anderson and the crew took care of it. Got their first win of the season, 49-14. 
Now, this is a team that on through here, I was f- definitely for them. And on paper, I was against them. But I got to give it to jo- University of Georgia. Uh, I had uh, them for my upset over Mississippi State. Georgia has become the new dark horse for the SCRC. Uh, mm-hmm. They won 30-5. to five. They've won two straight in big wins. Their first one against Florida. Their second one over uh, Mississippi State. Uh, I mean, they, they're they killing it. They are yeah. legitimately <laughs> killing it. I agree. It. Yeah, well done. Um, their only loss has been against South Carolina, which makes sense. So, yeah, South Carolina is awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> And so, yeah, I got to give credits. My bad, Georgia. I'd gone two weeks straight of doubting you and, like, half of this week doubting you. So, Jesse Panansky and the crew getting it done. Uh, and then my uh, women's pick was uh, Quinnipiac over Brown, Ivy League. And Quinnipiac ended up taking that win. So, for this week, dude, what are your locks for the week? Uh, so, I'm going to hit you with locks, men wise. Ohio State over Iowa. Easy one. And then Colorado State over Air Force. Mm-hmm. Uh, locks for the women is going to be Army over Life. And then Brown over Columbia. Upset for the men is Colorado, uh, number 16 over number 6, Utah. And then upset for the women is going to be Harvard over Dartmouth. And then Princeton over Cornell. Dude. Dude. I See, um, I, I'm, I'm, I got you. I got you. Except for I got a little difference on you. So for mine... I took. I decided to take up your mantle and uh, finally utilize Alabama for my oh, first yeah. lock. Oh no, that's nice. I take one week off. Then we pick up that. Fine. I sneak in. I sneak in. I'm a ninja with <laughs> yeah. it. Um, I took Alabama over Kentucky, uh, and for the uh, my second one, Kutztown over Wheeling Jesuit for my locks. Kutztown just killing it. Number seven. Yeah, is, they are doing actually really well. Yeah. They're, they're beast mode. I mean, they had one of their guys playing in the Rugby World Cup this year in uh, Kruger, even though he played against South Africa, and it sucked. But he was still in the Rugby World Cup, so that tells that's, you everything. That's still pretty neat, man. Yeah. So pfft, that's, you're still part of the top in the world. Yeah. Uh, other one, Life University. I, for my lock, I had Life University over Army. I believe in the Life University program. I believe that they can take it and get – Dealt, dole it out, so there's that. And then I had Yale women over UPenn women. And then for my upsets, I had uh, Florida over Tennessee. This one is for the sake of me trying to take a little bit of a risk because Tennessee is just amazing. Like, that SCRC East is beast. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's stacked. It's so stacked. stacked. Well, it's not even really, it, No, it is stacked. I mean, between you have, you know, obviously South Carolina, Tennessee, uh now Georgia coming in and then Kentucky's still there even though the record doesn't look at Kentucky is still as dangerous as ever and then just at the bottom Vanderbilt somewhere around there they're around um, and then my last upset was Colorado over Utah so number 16 Colorado over number 6 Utah I'm looking for the upset special there Colorado don't do me wrong all right I need y'all <laughs> Actually, same. Don't do me wrong either. <laughs> so I, I was with you on that one. The only one I think we have the disagreement. You believe too much in army women. I no, no. It's all about that life university. There's some. I I think they're sitting at like four and two right now. They're they're a bad group of ladies. They got their butts handed to them by Lindenwood, even though we already acknowledge that Lindenwood is. <laughs> yeah, exactly. By Lindenwood, who doesn't get their ass handed to them by. Lindenwood. We'll see. Yeah, we'll, we'll see, see who's talking. We'll who's see. saying what next Monday or get it. next Tuesday. next week. You're right. <laughs> Oh, man. Awesome. Look, end of the show. Dude, any thoughts for this week? Yes. The photo contest is fire right now. We have a ton of submissions. They're all looking great. The voting is through the roof. Keep sending them in. The link's all over the social media. <laughs> it's going great. Fantastic. US, an- another thought, USA Rugby, we have to start developing in the youth. We have to start creating more youth rugby touch leagues where we're going to expand this. We have one down here in Mobile. I help uh, or help run it uh, i'm a volunteer for it. it's fantastic working with the kids we need more of that if we're ever gonna that. be good get that ish you heard it usa rugby get that ish together son <laughs> <laughs> uh 
All right, awesome. Hey, look, uh, I, I don't really have that much to say. I, I'm really looking forward to actually next week. Get to see my boys from LSU Alexandria. They're going to be playing their first ever game coming out yeah, of nowhere. Yeah, that new team. Yeah, brand new. Uh, you know, so I got to give them credit. Enscro team. So, you know, give credit to Enscro for allowing them in. Boy Lejeune and all that. And then get to see him play against LSU. Dude, uh... Also, let people know if you guys are like communication majors or you guys are marketing majors, dude, hit me up. We want to set up some internships, help you guys get into rugby media a little bit more. So, uh, go and do that stuff, man. Um, outside of that, dude, there's there's nothing else. Ryan, man, another great show. Show number five. We're yeah. killing it. We're, We're killing, killing it. it. We're killing it. We're going to actually start. Pushing this out more because now we have to. Now we know what we're doing. Like right? before, we were testing, but now we got this. We got to test the waters, and now we got it down to the science. We got it down for that science. Do this. So, dude, everybody, great one. If you guys want to send us any questions, any messages, any responses, we love to hear it. Please subscribe. Gift Time Rugby Network on YouTube. Like us on Facebook. Gift Time Rugby. Like us on uh, Twitter. Gift Time Twitter. Rugby. Instagram. Tell your friends. Hit up the photo contest. There's, what, 10 days remaining on the contest, right? Yeah, 22nd it ends. Uh, I think one guy, I believe Austin Cunningham, he has a really nice photo. He has over like 50 votes right now. Someone's a short second with like 40-something, around 45. But we still have 10 days you can enter and win. And what? you get the profile picture and a cool polo. There so we go. Enter. So we're getting it done. We're doing it for y'all. We want to see. We want to represent. So great one, great show. Dude, this is Rugby Sense. No nonsense. And we are out. Peace.